silly not to be a girl, uh, although they are capable of it. But, um, or I don't think it's necessarily inherent because of being an American either. I mean, we do seem to have our more than our fair share of it over here, but um, I think most of the darkness in the images, most of my images anyway, probably stems from my growing up in Ireland in the 70s and coming of age in the 80s. So I think, you know, the bleakness comes from, from that, from just that very oppressive period in Ireland, you know, and um, not, not my home life was great, my parents were fantastic, my family was fantastic, but just the general, I mean, the atmosphere was in the country was just hugely oppressive for all of my formative years, it was just mass unemployment, violence, was, and there was nothing to do, it was a dreadful place. So, um, that's where the bleakness comes from. I'm certain of that, you know, because I don't, you know, I'm, despite what my my work might indicate, I'm actually quite optimistic. I think I, I think I'm fairly optimistic anyway. But I've got that, I've got that whole treasure trove of of bleakness to draw on. It's just a, it's kind of a a bottomless well. And so I carry, you know, that bleakness kind of comes through all of my work no, no matter what I try and do. I mean I can I've taken pictures of flowers and they just end up looking funereal. I can't help it. So no matter no matter what I do it just tends to go go south. So well I don't know. I kinda like it, especially with people. I've said it before and I think I think people look people look beautiful when they're a little bit sad. So but um American Girl was actually a reaction mainly to it was two things, a combination of two things. Um, I was basically going through a period of uh, of isolation and um, feeling very detached and confused, and I wanted to kind of convey that. So in, in a way, they're self portraits, as I've said before, which people find a bit confusing, but. Um, uh, but nobody wants to see pictures of me, you know, when they can, so I use models instead. And um, the other driving force behind American Girl was a reaction to all of these horrible, horrible pictures of um, these photo series of, of glamorous women going into hotel rooms and, you know, they look around the room and they're they go and they'll invariably go into the bathroom and look in the mirror and pout at themselves for some reason and then they go and <clears throat> lie on the bed and start to take their clothes off for no good reason whatsoever and I just, it's, I just hate these pictures, I hate them with vengeance uh, they're right up there with you know the the naked woman lying on a rock or the naked woman standing in the middle of a forest. I, you know, I don't understand these pictures. And um, there's just thousands of these hotel pictures coming out of Los Angeles. So I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to do something like that, where it was a kind of a high fashion Los Angeles looking thing, but they just looked like they wanted to die, basically. So. Yeah, they're a bit bleak. <laughs>
again, I know they're not like they're in this. They are in these uh, these Los Angeles hotel room series things because that's a very voyeuristic kind of um, depiction, um, and it's a very male fantasy probably actually um, there's something very very false about those kinds of images and so I wanted to I wanted to convey you know women alone you know just in, in a very in a very um, downbeat highly stylized highly contrived kind of way but also um, but also more realistic than these kind of than these um, these hotel images, which I just found inherently inherently phony and false. Um, but um, as with most of my projects, my initial my initial plans just just run away from me. So and then it just it, it just becomes something else. So it starts off with with guns and whiskey and cigarettes and stuff. And um, as somebody said at the Viewfinder show, uh, some of them are very kind of Quentin Tarantino-ish, which uh, it's a horrible thing to say, but she was right. Um, and um, they they basically become this study in in loneliness, which which is what it was all about all along. I just I just didn't know that, you know. And you know they're you know they're all about me. Oh, I'd like to. I'd like to think that it could be, you know, interpreted uh, as cinematographic rather than photographic. I like that. Certainly, certainly, I think um, my influences certainly are all cinematic rather than photographic. I, you know, I there was. I was never particularly interested in any photographers. The first photographer I came across was um, imaging. Conningham, and that was like in that was 2000, 2005 or so, where I was already starting. And the thing, the thing I liked about her was that um, that her work looked very similar to mine. So and um, so I, you know, I do, I like, I like the work of women photographers rather than men photographers. I always have, which is which is a bit strange, but um, but before. Before that, you know, I never really studied any photographers or whatever, but cinema, I certainly, I certainly studied, and um, so I'd like to think that, um, I'd like to think that they're, they're cinematic in scope, that sounds a bit grand, but, um, the, you know, the two things I think that a, a photograph should always have, any piece of art really, is that it should be most importantly, it should be good to look at. It should be something that you know you could hang on your wall. And um, the second thing is, it should tell a story or convey a message, you know, rather than just be purely decorative. And so, in all of my images, I try, you know, usually I try to. There's always a little story in there, and it's more than usually a very vague, ambivalent kind of. Um, open-ended story which is uh, very much open to the viewer's interpretation which I like too you know Do I think happiness is achievable? Um, yeah, I mean, it depends. <laughs> Contentment is certainly is certainly uh, is certainly achievable, uh, and uh, you know, not just for American girls, but for you know, boys and girls everywhere. I think um, it depends what your you know your aspirations are, and. Uh, you know what your needs are as a as a human being, and yeah, you know, my work does does I agree 
I have to agree. I mean, it's right there. It does very much focus on the bleak and the frail and the downtrodden and the sad. But um, I, you know, I find a I find a great deal of of beauty in sadness. Um, I think people. I've said it earlier, and I think people people look just a little bit more beautiful when they're sad. You know, um, most of my portraits and stuff. I try and um, I always try and get somebody, you know, when they're not paying attention to me, and you know, when they're you know focusing on themselves, when they're kind of withdrawing into themselves. Just and it's usually just people. People are very guarded, so I, they only do it for like a split second, and then you just have to grab it. You just have to grab it then. And I think that's when people look at their best, you know. And um, but. You know, I'm not, I'm not peddling in misery. You know, I'm, I do, I do believe. I find a, I think you have to, you know, I think you have to look at the, at the sad. You have to look at the sadness to find ha the happiness, and you have to look at the ugly to find the beautiful. You listen to, you know, you listen to sad music, and sad music can cheer you up. So I believe you know, in the same way, uh, a sad photograph. Or sad, any sad piece of art can can cheer you up. I would hope so. Anyway, that would be that would be nice. <laughs>